Confessions of a Teenage Hermaphrodite Written by Leanne Simon Narrated by Lisa L. Wiley Individuals depicted in the images are models and used for illustrative purposes only. Sharon sat her fork down and breathed deep. Her face softened and her body relaxed. Sadness touched her eyes. Was Dr. Jekyll becoming Miss Hyde? Wow. Like maybe she was a real person with feelings and all. When Sharon next spoke, her voice was gentler than I'd ever heard it. Jamie, Doctor's Hospital is a teaching hospital. Earlier this week, I watched them examine someone with a rare disorder. The patient was 16, less than 5 feet tall, and had strawberry blonde hair. He was still unconscious after having his appendix removed. I didn't recognize his face until the end or I wouldn't have stayed. She shrugged, looking apologetic. I'm sorry. My stomach muscles seized, almost making me hurl my lunch. I grimaced, nervous that my heart might not start beating again. For a few seconds, the only sound was the ticking of the kitchen clock. Then my pulse came crashing back, pounding in both ears. What more could anybody take from me? I drew in a long breath, closed both eyes, and exhaled. You stole his secret. I whispered. What will happen if everybody knows? No, Sharon whispered with a gentle shake of her head. I'm the only one who recognized you. I won't tell anyone. You can trust me to keep your secret. Fear and uncertainty raced across my mind. Did I have any choice? I stared at her without blinking, eyes unfocused. How much did she know? What did the doctor say about him? Sharon put on her medical student face. She would have looked perfect in a white coat. You have a genetic condition resulting in short stature, a pixie face, and a sexually ambiguous body. The doctor pointed out parts of your anatomy. And, she added in a conspiratorial whisper, he said you should have been raised female. I stared at the table wondering who would ever want some nosy medical student as a friend. But since she already knew everything, I longed for her acceptance. I closed my eyes again, trying to calm shattered nerves. What if he was? What do you mean? I don't understand. How could anybody explain a childhood like mine? I put my plate into the dishwasher and retreated to the living room. Outside the picture window, white clouds drifted across a pale blue sky. A small child's laughter echoed across the years. I'd been happy once, blissfully unaware of what awaited me. Out of my field of vision, I sensed Sharon's silent approach. In a hushed voice, I said, Maybe when he was little, he thought he was a girl. But when he got older, his mom and dad didn't like that. So you're a boy because that's what your mother and father want? Rejected, the little girl had run away from pain in her father's eyes. She's hidden in the one place no one could ever find her. Should I tell you the truth about Jameson? Would it help if you understood? In a small voice, I said, she might have built a pretend boy to fool them all. A wing-back chair sat in one corner of the living room, a lampstand next to it. I sat down, pulled my feet up under me, and opened a magazine. What good was dwelling on old wounds? The girl had died long ago. Sharon stepped in front of me, concern written across her face. Someone should tell her I'd like to be her friend. She reached out a hand, hesitated, and then touched my arm. Still withdrawing, I got up and walked toward the guest room. At the door, I gazed back at her with a growing heaviness in my chest. She hasn't talked to anybody since she was nine.